please sing, please sing. Come on, anybody believe him to be a way maker? Sing it out, sing it out. Say, way Sometimes this may take some faith. Sometimes you may not believe it when you're declaring it. But what if you begin to confess it anyway? Sing it again, way maker. What if your breakthrough was on the other side of your declaration? What if your healing was on the other side of your declaration? What if your deliverance was on the other side of your declaration of faith? Declare it, declare it. My God.
It sounds like a body of believers in this room. Declare it again, even when I don't see it. Just say, you never stop. I feel the faith rising in the room. I feel the hope rising. Even when, even when I don't see it. Lifted high, say, till there's only you and all the other men. Jesus, take you. You can have your place in my life. One more time, one more time, say, yeah, let all. No other name like the name of Jesus, no other name. Till there's only all the other names, Jesus take. Shout it out, say, Jesus take your place. We thank you for the power in your name. You allow the grave in Jesus. Greatly to be praised, God. And that's what we've come this morning to do, to lift you higher. Knowing, God, that as we worship and as we praise you, God, you're training our hands to war. God, but you're also fighting our battles on our behalf, God. And so we thank you for it this morning, God. We came to declare that your name is great, God. But we're here also because we know that, God, that we're a people that want to declare how much we love you, Jesus. We love you because you first loved us. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Can we just lift our hands right where we are and just begin to pour out our love on the Father. We did nothing to deserve it. We did nothing to earn it. But he loves us in spite of us. Are you grateful, church? Are you grateful, CPC? Are you grateful for his love? We thank you for your love, Lord. Let's worship. Let's continue in this posture of worship. The song says this. All things have passed away. Your love has stayed the same. Your constant grace remains the cornerstone. Yeah. Things that we thought were dead are breathing in. 
love him today, church. We sing this song to you, Jesus. We want to tell you you're our everything. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus, because you first loved us. Can we just sing that old chorus? Lift your voice to sing. Welcome, family. Happy Sabbath to you. This is your pastor, James Doggett Jr., and I'm just excited to be with you on this particular Saturday because God has been good. I hope you've come and you're ready to lift up the name of Jesus in this virtual space. Of course, to all of my First Church SDA of Riviera Beach uh, members and family, we welcome you today. Um, I pray that God will do something great in this moment that he would download into your life power, guidance, encouragement, inspiration. What do you stand in the need of today? You've come to the right place. I believe that the Spirit of God has gone before us and prepared the way. And I just want to say a word of welcome to each of you. We have folk who are tuning in all the way from Alabama. We have people all over the, the place. We appreciate you. Gabriella, we see you. Yeah, that's my sister Joy. We appreciate you, Terry. Thanks for coming through. We appreciate you as well. Let's continue, family, just to lift up the name of Jesus. And do this for me if you don't mind. Share this stream. As you know, we at First Church are not hosting drive-in service today. We're doing this virtual experience, which means that you have the privilege and pleasure of being a digital evangelist. Oh, yeah, that means that you can take this stream. And guess what? You can share it. Send this text message to your family, to your friends, because I have a message that I'm excited to share today. I know God has already prepared you and positioned you for elevation and that this will be a time of harvesting. 2022 will be a year of harvest in many of our lives. And I, I have a, a message that I, I believe God wants to deposit into your spirit today. So don't you dare be selfish with this word. Go ahead and share so that your family can come on in here and we can have a good time in this place, in this worship experience. Why don't we do this, family? I'm gonna say a word of prayer just as we launch into worship. 
And we're going to ask that you would just, wherever you are, link your faith with mine as we go to God together in prayer. Father in heaven, I'm grateful. Thank you, Lord, for being so good to us, for blessing us to see the end of another week, for allowing us to cross over into the sacred moments of the Sabbath. And I pray that you would please, God, as we worship you today. I pray that this worship experience will be found pleasing in your sight. Oh, God, whatever it is we stand in the need of, we thank you that you already have the solution and that the answer is already on the way. We're grateful for Jesus. We thank you for the sufficiency of his sacrifice. We are grateful that we can have access to eternal life through faith in Jesus the Christ. So today, we with a cleansed perspective, with pardoned sins, with a confession in our spirit, we're we're confessing, God, that we've made mistakes. And we thank you that you today have promised that you would pardon those who had the nerve to confess. So we thank you, God, for forgiveness. And we're asking that you again would do whatever you desire to do. Move your, 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 your weight around in this virtual space. Flex your muscles and remind us that you are still God. You're still King of kings and Lord of lords. We say thank you in advance for doing it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. All right, family. Um, we appreciate all. Hey, happy Sabbath from London, Rachel. Thanks for coming through. Dawn, uh, we appreciate you as well. Dorothy, thank you for coming through all the way from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'm telling y'all, we have people all over the country and the world who are worshiping with us today. And we just want to say thank you for doing it. So I have my sister, uh, sister Alicia Adams, um, who is is going to be leading us in our season of prayer. But family, I just wanna let you guys know some things are happening here at First Church. So tonight at 5 p.m., again, that's this evening at 5 p.m., I wanna let all of my First Church members know that we are going to gather in the Zoom platform, that, that same place that you come when we have Sabbath school each week and where we have Wednesday night prayer meeting. We in that intimate space are going to talk about uh, the future, our leadership that we have positioned uh, for this next season of ministry. Our nominating committee has been doing a great job in, in selecting individuals who are going to help take us higher and further in building the kingdom. And we want you to join us at 5 p.m. Tonight, 5 p.m. in the Zoom platform so that we can share these names with you, these new leaders who are going to, again, take the baton and run their leg of the race as best they can. And we want you to join us, be unified in this endeavor. So join us tonight at 5 p.m. in our Zoom platform. And I'm excited because this year, oh, my Lord, God is going to do some great things, some marvelous things. And we also want you to know that, listen, tomorrow we have a celebration of life for our very own sister, Brenda Warden. Many of you know that this past week we lost her. She fell to sleep in death and we're praying that God would bless and comfort the family, um, that God will continue to be their strength, especially tomorrow. Can you just pray, especially for those family members and friends who will be gathering there at our church, First Church tomorrow at 10 a.m., uh, those who desire to come and to to uh, view the body and to pay their respects at 10, that's that, that will be great if you can come and support the family. But then at 11 o'clock, we're going to have our service that will begin. And we want you to pray, pray with and for this family. And of course, we also have um, our sister Antoinette, who uh, fell to sleep in death as well. Um, we're praying that God would be with her family. Um, some have already traveled from afar. Um, and we're asking that God would just continue to prop them up on every leaning side and that he would be their strength in this time. What do you need prayer for, family? We know that during this season, especially in this virtual space, we have the privilege and opportunity of interceding on your behalf. So if you have a request, we encourage you to go ahead and put that request in the chat, put it in the comment section so that we can pray with specificity over your specific needs, whether it's for you or family member or friend. We want to cover you in prayer. So we're encouraging you to go ahead and utilize this. Um, I see some people who are already putting prayer requests right there in the chat. Um, it's time for us to go to God in prayer. So I'm going to invite Sister Alicia, um, who's going to lead us in our prayer time today, family. Let's prepare our hearts. Let's prepare our minds as we go to God in prayer. Sister Alicia, thank you for coming. The floor is now yours. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, and thank you, Pastor. At this time, I'm going to give everyone just a minute to center your mind on the Lord. I'm going to give you a minute to kneel and to pray. As we enter the virtual prayer room, 
we want to lift up the name of the Lord because everything that we do, it's all about giving him glory, honor, and praise. Amen. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, O oh God, for your mercy. We want to thank you, God, for your grace. We want to thank you, Lord, for your provision. We thank you, Lord, that we are still in the land of the living, where we can lift up your name and glorify your name, magnify your name, because your name, O oh Lord, is worthy to be praised. You are the God above every God. And we thank you, God, for life. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for every single person that is joining us, all our family members at First Church, dear God, and our sisters at Deerfield Church for joining us this morning, oh God, in the virtual space. Father, we thank you, God, for those who are joining us around the country and around the world, especially Dawn and Dart, who have entered this space, oh God. We thank you for them. Lord, we present our family this morning. Father, we pray this morning that if there's anything that we have done, any sin that we have committed, we pray, Lord, that you will forgive us of all our sins. We pray, God, that you will wash our sins away and that you will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father God, as we enter this new year and as we close out the last Sabbath of January, Father, we pray that you will go before us, dear God. You will make the way because you are our God. Father, we pray that you will have favor on us, O oh God, as we enter this new month of February, that you will make the way clear, O oh God, that you will have favor on our lives, that you will have favor on our spouses, that you will have favor on our children, that you will have favor on our grandchildren and our aunts and uncles, nieces, nephews, cousins, friends, oh God, that you will deliver us from all unrighteousness, that you will allow us, God, to walk in you, oh God, in unison with you. Father, that you will cover everything that we do, that you will allow us to stand in awe of you, oh God, that you will allow us to see your power. You will allow us to see your favor and the goodness of you, and you will allow us to share and to uh, tell others of your goodness. Father God, we pray for the new leaders that will be coming in, oh God that you will give them the support, that we will be supportive of them, that they will know, dear God, that the challenge is that is ahead of them, that it's not impossible, that there's nothing impossible that they cannot do once they are doing it to give you glory, honor, and praise. Lord, we pray that you just lift them up today that you will have favor upon them, that every idea and every situation, dear God, that you will walk them through. We pray, God, that those of us who are not in leadership position, but we will be in supportive position, oh God, that we will support them, that we will be an anchor for them, that we will be their armor bearer, oh God, that they will be able to depend upon us to pray them through, depend upon us, dear God, to support them, whether physically or financially, emotionally, oh God, that we will be there and we will support them. And every ministry, oh God, will turn the page, will be able to lead others to Christ because that is the most important thing is to lead others to Christ. Father, we pray this morning for the bereaving family, oh God. Please, God, we know what it is to lose a loved one. So we're asking you today, God, please touch them, touch them this morning and be their support this morning, oh God. Allow them to know that you are God and you love them with an undying love. We know that it is hard to lose a mom. We know that it's hard to lose a loved one. So we ask you this morning that you will support them, oh God. Allow us to be there, just not to forget them, not to neglect calling, not to neglect praying, because it's those prayers that takes us through those difficult times. So we're asking you, God, this morning that you will just touch them emotionally and physically, 
Surround them with angels from high, oh God, that will help them through the difficult, lonely nights when they need to hear their loved ones' voices and knowing that their voices will never be heard again until that resurrection morning. God, I pray that you will just support them. And God, I thank you this morning and I praise you, God, for our pastor. I praise you, God, for him and I ask you that you will continue to Provide his for him his needs. Provide for his wife, dear God. You just provide her, su support her, God. Surround her and support her on every level in the name of Jesus. Cover her as she traveled through this season, oh God. And Father, support the children, cover them. Support his parents, cover them. Support everyone that support him, oh God, cover them. And Lord, all the prayer requests, you know them. You know them, oh God. I put them before you and I ask that you will support the needs. Somebody today have a need. Somebody today is going through marital problems. Somebody today, dear God, may have heard the bad news that they have cancer. Somebody today, dear God, is suffering from diabetes. Somebody today, God, like that young lady in Orlando who went through that accident today, yesterday and lost a friend, oh God, um, Naomi, continue, God, as they take her off this life support today, support her, be with her, and Father, just claim her life for you, oh God. Somebody today, dear God, is contemplating suicide. I ask you in the name of Jesus that you will remind them that this is not the way out. Somebody today, God, is being pressured into doing something that they should not do, whether it's stealing a car, whether it's it's lying, whatever it is, I pray that you will touch them and, and remind them that they are a child of God. Praise, uh, Father, I pray today, oh God, that you will remind your people that we are under the direction and the power of the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit speaks to us that we are to be obey, obedient and to obey. Remember our young people, oh God, cover them. Allow them to walk into oneness with you because they are our, our future leader. So I pray today that you will support them. And whatever it is that we have neglected to ask of you today. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will grant it unto us. And Father, as Pastor Duggett bring us the word today, I pray in the name of Jesus, oh God, that it will permeate and touch our hearts, that it will bring new life and new meaning and new ideas and new journey. It will open us windows and open up doors for us to step in and to believe and to know that we are children and in the army of God. So bless the word. Bless it as it goes out today, that it will touch hard, that it will change homes, that it will allow us to step up, dear God, and to come to become the child that you want us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. We thank you so much, Sister Alicia, for leading us in prayer. We believe in prayer and its power, and we appreciate you for interceding on our behalf. God bless you. God bless you. Um, we have... People, again, who are working with us from all over the country, we appreciate your presence. Um, we want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, the, what is that? Davidia? Yeah. We appreciate you for coming all the way here to worship with us. Uh, we celebrate all of you. I saw Sister Lenore Kennedy in here. Uh, we appreciate you as well, Sister Kennedy, for coming through. Um, and we want to just celebrate all of you who are here. Now, listen, we have the, ch the chance, the privilege today of connecting um, with one another in the virtual space, and we can also sow. And I want to just, on behalf of the First Church of Riviera Beach, say a word of thanks to all of you who've been so supportive. You've been generous. You've been faithful. You've been sacrificial and extravagant in your giving. One thing I can say about my First Church is that this is a church that gives. People who are in need can come, and they know that they will receive support from this particular fellowship. And it's such a privilege and pleasure to be a part of a group who knows what it means uh, to take what God has given and to ensure that it goes toward the 
helping to meet the needs of those who are around us. So I want to say thank you to each of you to do who have been doing that. And we want to make sure that you know how you can continue to sow and how you can continue to give. We at First Church have three different ways that you can give. You can mail it, you can give it in person, or you can go over there and you can give at www.adventistgiving.org. We ensure that all that goes um, into our coffers is used toward kingdom building work, and we celebrate and appreciate you. And folk from all over the world, if it is your desire to pour in, um, you can even give via Cash App to the Q Revival. That is, again, the money sign, the Q Revival. And that gift will also go toward helping those who are in financial crisis. And we appreciate all of you who have been giving and who have been sowing. Y'all, I'm excited to share the word. I can't wait to get to the moment where we can together dive into the word and, and we can extricate it to see what God has to say for us today. Um, I hope you all are, are ready and are prepared. I want you to make sure that you have your pen, your paper, because we're going to capture what the Spirit of God has to say to us today. However, before we go to the Word of God, we do have a song that will be sung um, by my friend, my brother from another mother. Um, we're going to ask that he renders his gift unto the Lord. Uh, but before we even hear that, that song, I just want to give you a quick reminder that again tonight at 5 p.m. we're going to be joining um, one another in the Zoom platform and we're going to be hearing uh, the leaders, the names of those who've been nominated by a nominated committee who are going to take us into this new season of ministry. How are y'all doing? Uh, we want to make sure that you are connecting with us throughout the week and, and we want you to know that if you have any need, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, God has some great things in store for his family and we want to do our part in connecting our faith with yours and in seeing what God has uh, to, to do, what he desires to do in this portion of the vineyard through our gift. So at this time, we're going to go ahead and, and hear this song that's going to prepare our hearts in preparation for the word. You made me deep in my despair to show me you would never leave me there You claim because I was Made for so much more I am your child And I'm worth fighting for So heavy With the weight of my mistakes You carried me And refused to let me sink Under the pressure You meant for me to soar And I'm worth fighting for Eyes haven't seen Ears haven't heard All you have planned for me And nothing can separate me from your love When there's so much more Still worth fighting for Now I'm moving By faith and not by sight Towards victory by the power of your might, you're straightening out my path and opening every door. I am your child, and I'm worth fighting for. Ears haven't heard all that you planned for me. Separate me from your love when there's so much more still worth fighting. Say, eyes haven't seen, ears have not heard. All you have planned for me, and nothing, no, nothing can separate me from your love. That's why I'm pressing toward the mark, because the calling on my life is worth, and I'll keep my mind stayed on you, Jesus.
you know God has so much more in store for you. Eyes haven't seen. This is not the end. This is just the beginning. What's in front of you is better than what's behind you. Come on. Anybody know you got the victory? Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Oh, I told Satan, get thee behind. Because victory, I said victory, I said victory. Today is mine, and it's in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name, the strong name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Oh, tell me who can stand before us when we call. Thank you, Jesus. Well, hallelujah, we have the victory. If you believe you have the victory in the name of Jesus, if you believe your future is worth fighting for, if you know that what is in front of you is greater than what's behind you, if you have the nerve to believe that the latter shall be greater than the former, I know you've been through hell and high water. I know you struggled your way up the rough side of the mountain, but I need somebody to just hold on to hope right now. Don't you dare give up because it's always too soon to quit because as long as God is still King of kings and Lord of lords, as long as he's still seated on the throne, as long as he is still sovereign, which means he is in absolute control, then I have every reason to rejoice, which is why the Bible says rejoice of the Lord always. Hallelujah. And again, I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be made known to man. The Lord is at hand. Don't be anxious for anything, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace that surpasses all understanding shall guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Anybody grateful for peace? Anybody grateful for joy? Anybody grateful that the Spirit of God is yet resident in your life? Family, you still have a future that is worth fighting for. Let's go to God right now in prayer as we position ourselves to receive this message that God is preparing to give. Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you for the message in the music, for the reminder that whatever the enemy is doing to come against us is merely an indication that you have something great in store. I pray, God, that you would help us to be patient. I pray that you would help us to be focused. I ask that even now, as we open up the pages of your word, that you would please illuminate our minds and understanding. Do more, though, than make us 
us, make us educated sinners. I pray that you would give us power, give us power to live in harmony with that which we will now learn. Provide for us the ability to apply the message so that we can see a harvest. God help us a rich harvest that we will be able to reap because of what we have sown. I thank you right now for my church family, and I praise you in advance for doing what only you can do, and that is quench the thirst of every soul. We say thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray it in faith. Amen and amen. Praise God. I'm right here with you. Smile, I'm right here with praise God. He is deserving of all of the praise, the honor, and keep on holding on. We need you to keep on holding on. There is victory in the name of Jesus. Right now, I want you all to do this for me. I'm about to preach this message. I want to share this word God has placed on my heart, but but I want you to, if you don't mind, go ahead and get a pen, get some paper, if you have the ability. Now, if you're driving or something like that and you're just listening, we need you to be safe. But if you if you are privileged to be in a position to where you can actually write down some notes, I have some information that I pray will take you to a new level in your spiritual journey with Christ. And we're going to do this. We're going to start this sermonic conversation. And this is a conversation, by the way. I want you guys to go ahead and utilize that comment section because I want to talk with you. I want to talk to you, with you. I want us to converse today about the word of God, and I'm going to make sure that we have a good conversation. So do this for me. Go ahead and go over to your Bibles. And if you don't have a Bible close to you, don't worry. I'll put it right here up on your screen. We're going to go to our main passage of scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Lord help us. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And we're going to start reading at verse 1, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 1. And the New Living Translation captures the word of God this way. And I want you guys to follow along because God has something to say today. The word of God says, I really don't need to write to you about this ministry of giving for the believers in Jerusalem. Let me stop here and just let you know that the person who's, who is writing this particular message to those in Corinthian, in Corinth, to the Corinthian church, it is none other than Paul himself, Paul, the prolific writer of the New Testament. Listen to what he's saying to these these members of the church in Corinth. He's saying, y'all, look, I really don't need to write to you about this ministry of giving for the believers in Jerusalem for I know how eager you are to help. Praise God for those who are eager to help. And I have been boasting to the churches in Macedonia that you in Greece were ready to send an offering a year ago. In fact, it was your enthusiasm that stirred up many of the Macedonian believers to begin giving. Praise God for your, your, your giving because it's stirring up the giving of other people. Verse 3 says, but I am sending these brothers to be sure you really are ready as I have been telling them and that your money is all collected. He's talking about money now. I don't want to be wrong in my boasting about you. He says in verse four, we would be embarrassed not to mention your name, not to mention your own embarrassment if some Macedonian believers came with me and found that you weren't ready after all I had told them. So I thought I should send these brothers ahead of me to make sure the gift you promised is ready. But I want it to be a willing gift. Oh, somebody say willing gift. Not one given grudgingly. Now, we're about to unpack this, but I need you guys to understand the context of this particular passage. I heard my brother Jamie Callisar say that if you don't grasp the context, you can get conned by the text. So we want you to ensure that you understand what's going on here. Because in this particular passage, you have Paul, who is now talking to the church in Corinth. Now, he's telling them, look, I've been boasting about you guys because you have been so excited. You've been so enthusiastic about giving to this particular ministry for there are people who had needs in Jerusalem. And Paul linked up with those in Corinth and said, we're going to give to help meet their need. Can we just pause here and celebrate those who have a, a heart, a giving heart, a heart for the people. When, when you see need and, and you, you do what you can to help meet the need where it exists, praise God for those folk, because they were excited about helping meet the need of those who lacked in Jerusalem. But Paul 
Paul said, look, I've been enthusiastically telling folk, I've been boasting to those in Macedonia about how you've been giving so generously and faithfully. But I did notice something that that enthusiasm has begun to wane. He said, I, I want to make sure that I'm not embarrassed for having now boasted about your enthusiasm to give. And then when it comes time for you to follow through with the promise that you made, uh, to follow through with the commitment that you made, I don't want to be embarrassed because we show up and you ain't ready to do what you said you wanted to do. I can pause here. I can get off on this exit and I can start preaching to those of us who make promises, but we don't follow through on those promises. And the Bible declares that you should let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. And somebody today needs to receive this message because Paul comes to those in Corinth and he says, look, you made the commitment. Let's follow through because I don't want to be embarrassed and I don't want you to be embarrassed. So what does Paul do? Paul sends ahead of him Titus so that he can ensure that the people are prepared to give the gift toward helping meet the need of those in Jerusalem when Titus, when Paul finally arrives. So this is the context right now. Paul is simply saying, look, y'all, you've got to give. If you said you're going to give, it's time to do it. Don't you dare start backpedaling after you've already made a commitment to help meet the needs of others. And then he goes after the first five verses of chapter nine. See, some of y'all know the successive verses that we will now pay attention to. And these verses then explain to us why giving is so important. Paul says, you said you were going to give. Now it's time for us to give. But know that when you give, the nature of your giving is of utmost importance. Does somebody know where I'm going? Because I know that many of you have quoted this verse before because we shift now to verse six where he says this. Oh, God. He says, remember this. A farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. Ah, let me come back and talk to you. I want you to make sure you understand this. A farmer who plants only a few seeds will reap a small crop. Watch this. But the one who plants generously, hallelujah, will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your own heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves, woo, y'all know the, the, this verse in a different version. It says, for God loves a cheerful giver, a person who gives cheerfully, and God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Can I just pause here and ask the question, who wants everything you need to be provided you from God? Who wants to ensure that you're in a position where God can bless you so that you have not just what you need, but you have abundance so that that cup that you have runneth over and you're able to bless other people? I don't know who I'm talking to, but if that is you, if you desire to be in the position where God can bless you in such a copious way, in such a magnificent and generous and extravagant way, then you're in the right company today because God is going to help you position yourself so that he can bless you beyond anything you can imagine. So listen to what he says. As the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. For verse 10, God is the one who provides seed. Oh, God. God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase resources. Ah, anybody need for God? Let me come back to you. Anybody need for God to provide and not just provide resources, but to provide and increase resources? resources. I pray this prayer of blessing and favor over my church as God provides. May he not just provide, but may he provide and then increase the resources that he sends our way. But watch this, watch this. May he provide and increase your resources and then <laughs> produce a great harvest of generosity, not to you or for you, but produce a level of generosity 
in you. Ah, because when God gives to you in such a, a way that it begins to increase generosity in you, that which God gives, you can't wait. You are, you have an insatiable desire. You are excited to give it to other people in generosity and extravagance. Now watch this, watch this. Ah, God, now we're just getting started. Verse 11 says, yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, come on, y'all. God doesn't just give you the gifts. He wants you to, to receive the gift, but then give it to those who are in need. He says they will they will thank, not you, the one who, who's blessing them, but they will thank the one who gave you that which you are using to bless them. They will thank God. Verse 12, the final verse of consideration. So two good things. Listen to this. So two good things will result from this ministry of giving. Paul is talking now about the ministry of giving. And I'm going to talk to you about the anatomy of sowing and reaping here in a second. But I want you to receive this message just by reading the text. There are two benefits here that will result from the ministry of giving. First, the needs of the believers in Jerusalem will be met. Those who are in need, they will have their needs met. And watch this. Secondly, they will joyfully express their thanks to God. Brothers and sisters, I want to simply share this message with you under the simple subject and title. Watch this. Don't eat your seed corn. I'm going to say that one more time. Don't eat your seed corn. I already got some folk who are talking to me now. I see you. Joy, give and your blessings will be multiplied. That's what we're talking about today. Today, we're going to talk about the power, the anatomy, the law of sowing and reaping, the law of, of seed time and harvest. Because right now, we in our church there in Riviera Beach and in Deerfield Beach are shifting into a new season of ministry leadership. And what I'm coming to understand is that as we're having conversations about ministry, there are many people who need the encouragement and reminder that what God gives you, you need to give to other people in the form of kingdom building business, in the form of using your gifts, talents, time and treasure so that God can receive glory from those to whom you are being a blessing. Understand what's happening here. Paul says we're blessing folk in Jerusalem, people in Corinth, your position to bless them. You said you would. Now it's time for you to put your money where your mouth is. And I want you to know that when you do it, this is the law that God, the law of reciprocity that God has, has created and put in place in this life. What you give, God help me. What you give, God will give back to you. But you've got to learn the power. Watch this. You've got to learn the power of sowing uh, so that in harvest time, you will be in position to reap. Are y'all with me today? Are y'all ready to hear this message? because I'm excited to share it. Because first of all, I want you to understand this, that when it comes to your treasure, I'm talking about money and your possessions. This is not a subject that Jesus himself did not address. For when you look throughout, you peruse the New Testament, you'll notice that 15% of his preaching and 40% of his parables were dedicated to this subject of money and possessions, what we are to do with that which God has blessed us with. Now, I know we don't want to touch this topic in many of our churches because we don't want to be accused of preaching a prosperity message. But brothers and sisters, don't get it twisted. There are promises in God's word. And whatever God declares, we can with faith and audacity and courage claim those promises. And I want us to unearth the promises that are found in this particular passage, because in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, many of us are very much aware of those verses that says, he who sows sparingly shall reap sparingly. And we talk about how we should give with a cheerful heart. But did you not see all of the promises that were attached to, to the generosity in those who are willing to not just uh, receive, but those who are willing to sow, oh God, which is why today I want to share with you all seven laws. How many did I say? Seven laws of sowing and reaping, of seed time and harvest. And what I want you to understand is at the beginning of our conversation today, that one of the reasons why you've got to pay attention to your resources, the money that you have and the possessions that you 
you possess. You've got to understand that the reason why God talks about this so much is because it is an easy metric for us to measure our faith in God, to measure our thankfulness for who he is and for what he's done and our love toward him. It is an easy metric to use to measure your compassion toward others who are in need, to measure your honesty, whether you are going to follow through with what you said you were going to do and be um, a person of integrity to sow the way God told you to sow, 10% plus, and and to to give that which he's given you to other people. It, it is an easy metric for us to use to measure whether or not we are committed to kingdom building work. Brothers and sisters, I didn't come here to play today. I'm coming here to let you know that one of the reasons why Jesus says the Bible declares that where your treasure is, there your heart shall be also. It's because it's an easy way to identify where your heart belongs. Do you does your heart belong to the kingdom? Does your heart belong to selfish endeavors that are used to prop up and elevate your own uh, personal achievements in a form of self-sufficiency so that you can secure the glory for uh, from God for yourself through stealth? Stealth, I want you today to just ask yourself the question, what do I do with what God has blessed me in the form of resources, in the form of possessions, in the form of gifting, talent, and ability? Today, we're going to have to consider where we are and make a decision about where we are going. Because brothers and sisters, here it is. I want you to know, and this is there's a book that's entitled Seven Laws of Harvest, written by uh, John Lawrence. And today, I want to extract some principles that he suggests in his particular book. And this is what it is. I want you to know that number one, <laughs> I hope you're all are ready. Number one, you cannot reap harvest from seeds you did not sow. Jesus said, I'm going to say that again. You cannot reap a harvest from seeds you did not sow. There is in this particular passage, the verbiage, watch this, where it says that God gives seed to the sower. <laughs> he gives seed to the sower. The Bible does not say he gives seed to the eater. Mm. Let me see if I can help you understand this, because when you have seeds in your hand, imagine me having a bag of seeds in my hand and, and, and that bag of seeds in my hand, they're nothing but seeds. Um, but when I take those seeds and I have the nerve to sow them and I put them in the ground, what then will happen is I can reap a harvest from that which I have the nerve to plant. But when I receive from God's seeds in the form of gifting and talent and resources and possessions and money and all of these things, I have in my hand bag, a bag of seeds. But if I do not plant them, if I do not sow them, if I do not put them to good use in helping build the kingdom and meet the needs of others, I cannot then expect to reap a harvest. Watch this from seeds. I've not had the nerve to sow. The reason why I, I think this is so critically important, and I'm going to put this back on the screen for somebody to see, the fact that you cannot reap harvest from seeds you do not sow, it's not just about you reaping a harvest from those seeds. It is also about you being a good steward with that which God has given you. Why is it important that you engage the gifting, talent, abilities that God has provided, the money, the, the possessions, the resources? And this is why. Because Watchman Nee says in his book, The Spiritual Man, something that I think is profound that we need to, with sobriety, receive. He says that an unused talent is a dangerous talent because when you don't engage it, you inevitably allow occasion for the devil to engage it for you. God help us. When you are not intentional, about sowing and using and utilizing that which God has blessed you with. An unused gift, talent, and possession and resource, watch this, an unused talent is a dangerous one because with when you aren't with intentionality doing what God said for you to do with it, you then provide occasion for the devil to slip in and to engage it for his nefarious purposes for you, which is why, God help me, which is why when you tell God, wait, you're in essence saying, no now. 
<laughs> when you don't say a yes to God, when he tells you to do, when he tells you to sow, when he tells you to move, a, a watch this, anything other than a yes now is a no now. Because when you say to God, wait, you're saying maybe I'll do it later, but right now it's a no. And I'm telling you, it is a very dangerous thing for you to receive of God a message of instruction, where, for you to receive of God some resource and some gift. And then when you hear him say, use it and sow it, plant it and give it, engage it and employ it, and you refuse to do it because you're overwhelmed with anxiety, you think you're going to fail. You don't know You don't know if you're going to achieve. You don't think that you have what it takes to go out there and accomplish that which God has told you to accomplish or because you're just simply too selfish. I need you to know something. You've got to engage it and sow it because when God tells you to do it, I need you to do it for there is, watch this, there is no reaping of a harvest from seeds you've not yet sown which is why in my church, in my churches, I'm asking for all of us to come to this, this moment of, of, of decision where we are going to have to, to choose whether or not we're going to be about the work or we're just going to talk about it. Because Paul said, you guys have been giving and I, I'm grateful for it because in chapter eight, he talked about how they gave beyond what his anticipation was. You all have been giving, but watch this. Don't you allow your enthusiasm to begin to wane. I need you to keep that fire. I need, oh God, what does it say in Romans chapter, I believe it's chapter 12, verse 11. It says, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your, your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Don't you allow your fire and that flame to flicker. I need for you to stay focused. Stay focused and don't you dare give up. Follow through with your commitment because here it is. You can't, let me put it up here again. You cannot reap harvest from seeds you did not sow. So don't be mad that your church isn't booming. Don't be mad that your ministry has not yet caught on. Don't be upset because your, your creative idea has not yet begun to bless others. When you've been sitting on the gift and you've not been utilizing it, don't be mad at the, whoa, what is, what is uh, Dr., Dr., uh, what's my guy's name? Dr. Eric Thomas. He said, don't be mad and not getting results from work you didn't put in. <laughs> you got to put it in. You got to sow if you want to be able to reap. So let, let me just let me just say this, that God, the, according to this text, he prospers the sower. He prospers the sower, <laughs> not the eater. He prospers the sower. But then watch this, number two, because we don't have much time. We also learn that we reap the same in kind as we sow. Watch this. We reap the same in kind as we sow. Do you all remember that verse that's in Galatians chapter six, verse seven? I'm going to put it up here for you if just in case you forgot, but it says, be not deceived. <laughs> God is not mocked for whatsoever a man, what? Soweth that shall he also reap. I want you to see the emphasis that we are putting here on the word that. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. The idea here is that we reap the same in kind <laughs> as we sow because there is a law of reciprocity at work in life. In other words, you get what you give. Mm, 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 mm. What a scathing rebuke this is to many of us who want to receive stuff that we've not yet had the, the gumption. We've not yet had the commitment to give. We want folk to bless us, yet we don't want to bless anybody else. And what I've come to understand is this. Folk who are mean and nasty, don't be mad that you're receiving that which you're putting out there because the Bible declares, oh, in the Old Testament, it says, it says, cast your bread upon the waters and you will receive it. It'll come back to you after many days. In other words, what you cast out there is what's going to return unto you. And I want you to understand, this is why you can't let negative people to make you negative. Because while they might be pessimistic, negative, criticizing, and judgmental, know that that's what they're going to reap. 
Because the Bible says in Matthew, this is Jesus. Jesus says, judge not lest ye be judged because the same measure you use, it will be measured unto you. In other words, let them be mean and nasty for they're going to receive that which they're putting out there. But I'm not going to let your negativity make me negative so that I begin to reap negativity because of your negativity because I sow negativity. Ah, I hope somebody's receiving this message. That's why you've got to be intentional about doing the work and will of God. Because you will sow, you will reap in kind. <laughs> you will receive that which you put out there. And it's, 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 it's clear, and it's delineated all throughout Scripture, that you'll get what's coming to you. <laughs> God, which is why you can't waste time when you see people in need and you have that which is you're able to bless them with. You can't waste time, family, because you could very well be in that same place of need and will need someone else to help you, which is why you've got to learn to be a blessing if you want to receive a blessing. And this is what I've come to understand. Think about the, do you remember the Old Testament, that story of Haman and Mordecai? <laughs> Haman, that, that hater Haman, who was so upset with Mordecai for the blessing of favor that was resting on his life. Mordecai refused to celebrate him. He refused to give him all the aggrandizement that he desired to receive. And what did Haman do? Haman, with his negative, poisonous, venomous self, he decided that he was going to find a way to kill Mordecai. So what did he do? He built the those, those gallows. <laughs> And he built them with Mordecai in mind. He was now preparing a, a, a scheme, a situation that he could use to hang Mordecai, the one he hated, the one he disliked. But what was the result? <laughs> Since he built the, the, the gallows, he ended up at the end of the day having to hang on that which he built, which is why you've got to be very careful, family, about choosing to be in a space of inertia where you sideline yourself from ministry because when you sideline yourself from ministry and you refuse to engage your gifting and talent, whether it's in the local church or in the community, you refuse to, to give to others in need. I'm telling you right now, what you sow, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that's your, I hope y'all are receiving this word right now because God's going to set someone free and he's going to position you. Oh God, he's setting you up for a huge blessing. So number, number Number one, you cannot reap harvest from seeds you did not sow. Number two, we reap the same in kind as we sow. But watch this, watch this. We also reap in a different season <laughs> than we sow. I need y'all to hear this. We reap in a different season than we sow. The reason why this point is, I think, so powerful is because many of us want to sow and then reap immediately. But harvest never comes immediately. Yet, I'm encouraging and inspiring someone, yet it will come. <laughs> but, but preacher, I've been, I've been doing my part. I've been, I've been serving and it's like God doesn't want to send support my way. I've been trying and it's as if God does not see me over here struggling. I'm waiting on the harvest and the harvest has not yet come. I'm sowing faithfully. I'm sowing generously. I'm sowing sacrificially, but it's like I'm not receiving. I need somebody to hold on now. Hold on to patience. You've got to have a level of focus and tenacity, which is why our theme this year is focused like a flint because I want somebody to know that the, the seed time and harvest time are two different seasons, <laughs> which is why you can't wait. You can't be impatient because you've not yet received that which you anticipate receiving yet. But I want you to know that it's on the way. Can somebody just go ahead and put that in the comments section? It's on the way. Don't you stop sowing. Don't you stop serving. Don't you stop praying. Don't you stop fasting. Don't you stop interceding. Don't you stop calling. Don't you stop giving your money, giving of your possessions. Don't you stop, family, because I need you to know that here, here's the point right here. We reap in a different season than we sow. So here's the word here. Be patient. <laughs> and you can be patient, for I've discovered that one of the fruits of the Spirit is not just love, joy, 
peace, um, a goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Guess what? One of the fruits of the spirit is patience. <laughs> so keep on sowing and know that the harvest is on the way. Um, I, I want you to know, though, watch this, watch this. Number one, you cannot reap harvest from seeds you did not sow. Number two, we reap the same in kind as we sow. Number three, we reap in a different season than we sow. But here it is. Number four, and this is going to bless somebody right here. <laughs> we reap more. Ah, Lord, help us. Then we sow. You reap more. This is a principle now. This is a principle that we see here resonant in God's word. We reap more than we sow. For the Bible says, watch this in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, give, <laughs> and it will be given to you. Watch this. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For watch this. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. I need somebody to know right here that at the end of the day, you will receive blessings, press down, shake it over. And uh, I need somebody to know that it will be poured into you. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Did you know, family, that approximately 800 grains of corn exist on a healthy cob? <laughs> I'm talking now about not, 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 not spending or, or not, not, not eating your seed corn. The reason why this is important is because if 800 grains of corn <laughs> are on a healthy cob, you can eat the cob and that's it. You can eat it. And guess what? You'll be full. You won't be hungry in the moment, but watch this. You will be hungry in the future. You will be hungry later, which is why if you plant one grain, watch this, one grain can produce a stock with four ears, which is the average, watch this, of 3,200 grains. <laughs> so you go from one grain to producing four ears that then possess 3,200 grains. But watch this. If you plant one full cob, <laughs> you can get 2 million 560,000 grains, which is why I'm encouraging family. I need somebody to put this in the chat. Don't eat your seed corn. <laughs> You've got to learn, family, to invest in good soil wherever good soil may be found. I want you to know that if this church, if First Church is good soil, then you need to learn to invest in it. If we are truly about the building of God's kingdom, which I can vouch that we are, if you're, we are truly about helping meet the needs of people in the community, those who are struggling, and we truly are, then I need for somebody to make the decision even now that you can, can expect uh, that the principle here is that we reap more than we sow, which is why you can't beat. Somebody knows where I'm going. You can't beat God giving no matter how hard you try, because with just one grain, <laughs> you can end up with 2,560,000 grains if you would just plant it and keep on investing. Anybody understand what this preacher is saying? So not only do you need to understand that you can't reap harvest from seeds you did not sow. Not only do you need to understand that we reap the same in kind as we sow, and we reap in a different season than we sow, we also understand that we reap more than we sow. But watch this, family. Uh, here it is. We reap in proportion as we sow. We reap in proportion as we sow. For the Bible declares in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25, the liberal soul shall be made fat and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. In other words, I want somebody to know right now that that we mm, we are able to reap in proportion as we sow, which is why it, the Bible says, it says, do not, do you not know that those who sow sparingly shall also reap sparingly, but those who sow generously shall also reap generously, which is why we can understand that I God. The simple message. There is but one way, one way to deal with all the stress and the anxiety and the sorrow and the death that we see around us, there is but one way. His name is Jesus.
Jesus Christ is the way. technical difficulties, but I'm still excited to preach this word. So I want you to understand right here that we reap in proportion as we sow. And right here, the word of God declares, watch this, in Proverbs 11, 25, that the liberal soul shall be made fat, <laughs> and he that watereth shall be watered. The liberal soul shall be made fat. Family, we reap in proportion as we sow, because you just have to understand that if you sow, again, just one grain, it might produce one stock, which would then give you four ears which would then average 3,200 grains. But remember, not only do you receive or reap more than you sow, but if you sow more, you can then reap more. If you're understanding what this preacher is saying, I dare you to put amen right there in the comment section. Because again, if you plant one full cob, one full cob can then eventuate into 2,560,000 2, grains, which is why we are encouraged to be not just faithful, but we are encouraged to be generous and extravagant in the giving of our gifts, time, talent, treasure. I need somebody today to put there in the comment section and say, I'm going to give. So not only do we reap in proportion as we sow, and we're almost there, family, we're almost there. You've got to understand that we should not let God, <laughs> we should not let the harvest rot in the fields. Don't let the harvest rot in the fields. What do you mean, preacher? Well, I've come to understand that there are two different groups to whom I've come to talk. Number one, we have the group of individuals who just won't jump. They're the ones who've been given resources, time, creative ideas, talent, possessions, and you, for whatever reason, whether it's an anxiety attached to to a, 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 a potential failure, whether it is a, you just, just being selfish and not wanting to give, whatever the case might be, the first group are those who just won't do it. You won't plant. You won't sow. You won't jump. You won't leap. You won't employ and use that which God has given you. But watch this. <laughs> There's another group who actually will take time to sow, you will take time to actually uh, plant that which God has given you. But watch this. When harvest time comes, we get lazy. <laughs> you do, we, we fall asleep. We go to sleep after sowing when harvest time comes. What do you mean, preacher? I want you to understand that there are many of us who just get lazy after we've planted. <laughs> and that 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 then looks like this. You, you make the commitment to say, you know what, I'm going to be there. You sign up, but never show up. God help me. You, this is the person who who uh, will write and compose. This is the person who will take time to record, but then never release or publish that which you've taken time to sow. You 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 start the process, but then you get lazy. So what happens is the 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 harvest rots in the field. Oh God, which is why you've got to be someone who's willing to follow through, not just begin. Watch this. This is the person who, you know, you went to school, you earned that degree. And then after having spent all that time and money in preparing yourself, you're the one who gets lazy and you just won't apply for the job. You're overqualified, but you won't go out there and actually put the work in to secure the position that you have now trained yourself to occupy, which is why 
why this point I think is so important that those of us who get trained, those of us who who watch video after video and and we receive advice and we receive um, all of these these this this mentorship. What happens is after you've done all that and then you don't use your gift, you are in essence allowing after the time after sowing after planting after seed time, you now get lazy. So the harvest then begins to rot in the field. Brothers and sisters, I know I'm talking to somebody who has a great idea and you began the process, but you ain't followed through yet. I'm encouraging you right now to understand. Here's the power of this point. At the end of the day, don't let the harvest rot in the field. Don't you dare let the harvest rot in the field. And family, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. This is the final point here because we've, we've gone through um, some of these laws. We've gone through some of these laws. Number one, you cannot reap harvest from seeds you did not sow. Number two, we reap the same in kind as we sow. Number three, we reap in a different season than we sow. Number four, we reap more than we sow. Number five, we reap in proportion as we sow. Number six, don't let the harvest rot in the field. But brothers and sisters, receive this word. Here it is. We cannot do anything about last year's harvest, but we can about this year's. Oh, hallelujah. There's hope right here. You can't do anything about last year's harvest, but we can about this year. This is why I've come, because I don't want you to sit in a position of regret because you missed opportunities to sow. Therefore, you were unable to reap when harvest time has come. But brothers and sisters, I'm here to let somebody know that the test of your faith in God is not that you wallow in regret for the past failures and mistakes and missteps and missed opportunities, but your willingness to engage right now with the opportunity God is presently giving. Because I learned this, that the sooner you start investing is the single biggest key to gaining health and wealth. Did y'all know that? It's about how quick you get in the game. It's about how soon you're willing to invest. If anybody knows the, the magic of compounding interest, it's the quicker you get in that thing, the, the, the more you'll be able to reap over time. It's the sooner you're able to begin, the sooner you're able to begin, the sooner you're able to begin, which is why I've come here today with this message of encouragement and activation to let someone know and hear me, please don't let this harvest time passed. Don't allow 2022 to, to, to be an, another year on your list of years of missed opportunities because you refused to, because of whatever justifiable excuse you like to use, you refuse to engage your gift. You refuse to take that leap of faith. You refuse to jump and employ and give and, and, and to, to follow through with the commitment that God has placed in your spirit. Brothers and sisters, this is is your pastor pleading with you. This is your pastor encouraging you. This is your pastor trying to let you know and implore you, family, don't let this harvest time pass. And I hear somebody right now. I hear you. I hear you. I hear what, what is being said in the confines of your soul. You're suggesting right now, well, preacher, I, I, I don't have any, any, any seed to spare. <laughs> I don't have any seed to spare. All I got is just a little bit. I don't have much to give, uh, preacher. I, I'm struggling by myself already right now. I don't have anything to give. Well, you come to the right place because I want to call a few people to the witness stand just to remind somebody that little becomes much <laughs> in the hands of the master. Little becomes much in the master's hand. Can I call first to the witness stand just this young boy? Y'all know the young boy who, who Jesus calls to his side with just two fish and, and just five loaves of bread and and what does Jesus do? Jesus takes the little that this boy has and 
He prays over it and, and he breaks the bread and it multiplies so that just two fish and five loaves were able to bless over 5,000 people. I need somebody to know that you have enough, that whatever you have, use what you got in your hand. Don't be so envious and jealous of other people's abundance that you don't employ and engage and use the little that you, you currently got. Because somebody needs to also know, can I call the, the to the witness stand uh, that widow over there in Zarephath? Y'all remember the widow in Zarephath? This woman who has the prophet Elijah come to her, her home and, and he asked the question, what do you have? And I know, I hear, I hear you. You're saying the same thing that she said because the widow at Zarephath, Zarephath literally said, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I'm gathering just a few sticks, she said, to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat and what? And die. I'm at my wits end. I ain't got much. And but 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 what did God say to her through the prophet? What was the the message, the 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 encouragement? What was the charge and the challenge? Ah, it was give give God what you got. <laughs> And what did she do? She gave of that last little bit that she possessed. And God then took that little bit. And through the prophet Elijah, he performed a miracle so that her jars never ran out of oil. And she never went lacking for the rest of her life. God took that little bit and transformed. Do you not know that God celebrates folk? He highlights folk. He encourages folk who have the nerve to use the little bit that they got. Do you not remember this this widow who gave her last two mites? Y'all know just one fourth of a penny. She she went up there and she gave the little that she had and, and Jesus looked at her and celebrated her because he needed them to know that she gave more. God help me. She gave more than all of those who were able to provide more money inside of the gift inside of the basket, inside of the offering plate, inside of, 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 of the, the virtual space, inside of the church. I, she gave more than all of them. Why? Because she was willing to use what she had. And I'm encouraging somebody, y'all, to just use what you got. Plant what you have. What do you have in your hand? I dare somebody to use it because in the Old Testament, Jesus, I feel my help. In the Old Testament, I know of a man by the name of Shamgar in the book of Judges. Shamgar, who only shows up in one verse, in one chapter, in one book of the Bible, and yet when he shows up, he gives us such a powerful example of someone who's willing to use what he has in his hand. Does anybody remember how Shamgar, the Bible declares, took an ox goad, and that little stick that's used to prod the oxen while they're plowing, he took that little stick, and he was able to overwhelm the enemy and kill all of these enemy soldiers with just a stick. He didn't have a sword. He did not have a shield. The Bible does not indicate that he went to any university to learn the art of fighting. He was not some soldier who had all of the equipment necessary to go and kill the enemy. All he did was he had a little ox goat in his hand. And the Bible said that he used what he had in his hand. Brothers and sisters, can I encourage you to use what you got? Use what you got. Take that which God has blessed you. And I dare you to plant it, sow it, engage it, employ it, use it, and watch God blow. Hallelujah. Watch God blow your mind with his blessing. Is anybody just grateful today that the encouragement is that you have enough, <laughs> that you got what it takes, that even with your little bit of talent, your little bit of money, your little bit of possession, God says, I still want to use you. I still want to use you, which is why, family, as your pastor at First Church, we have an aggressive uh, ministry agenda. We're pulling together some leaders. We have a gifting in our church of people who are in the medical field, and we're going to engage in ministry that's going to help not just our members, but our community. We got, y'all, a, a, a goal of, of, of taking this media ministry to a whole nother level and engaging our youth and helping feed the homeless through our community service and hungry 
to our community service ministry. Y'all, we have an aggressive ministry agenda at our church. And I'm here to tell you that you have space, that we have opportunity. We want you to help us support the building of God's kingdom. Give what you got and watch God blow your mind. Don't eat your seed corn, y'all. Don't be so selfish that you take what God gives you and you only use it for yourself. You've got to invest. You've got to sow. You've got to plant because if you do it, oh God, if you do it, the testimonies will start to blow your mind. I, I feel like sharing a testimony even now. Oh God, about when I was in college, I remember hearing this person who talked Mm, who talked about how they took their percentage of giving, uh, their tithe and offering to, to another level. They were giving 10% and they would, they would throw on top of that another 5%. And they said the testimony was that they, they took that percentage to another level. They, they started to give 20%. <laughs> 10% of tithe and, and 10% of offering, and they took their giving to another level. And then they, they shared the testimony of how God began to open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings into their lives. And I made the decision, even while I was there, and God didn't have much, but I remember making the decision that God, I want to I want to put you to, I want to see if this thing, this law of reciprocity is true. I want to see if sowing is and reaping is an actual thing. And it's not just what folk we're talking about, it's a thing. So I did it. I started to give 20%. And I need for somebody to know that God has been faithful. God has been generous. God has opened up doors for me that I could have never imagined. God has provided opportunity for me that I could have never dreamed of. And I want you to be able to give the same testimony that when you give, God will give back to you. I need somebody to know that with your shovel, no matter how big it is, all I know is that your shovel ain't as big as God's. Keep giving and watch God give right back. And I'm going to testify even now that God is going to give our church, God is going to give our ministry a testimony that will blow our community and city's mind because we made the decision that this year we're not going to miss the opportunity to sow so that we, during the harvest time, can have an expectation and anticipation of reaping mm, more than we sow. So today, my encouragement to you is this, where is God asking you to sow? How is God asking you to sow? Give of your resources. Go ahead, give. I need you to pour in. I need you to do it. I need watch. Most people do not have a system, a systematic, regular giving pattern. They, they, they give in, impulsively. If, if somebody preaches real good, then they'll give it. Or if somebody sings real good, then they'll give it. Or if they just feel guilty, then they'll give it. No, no, no. I'm asking you now to make a decision. How will you systematically give? Not just your money. Yes, make that decision. What's the percentage? How are you going to at least with a baseline provide financial resources toward kingdom building? But then on top of that, you've also got to take the time uh, to determine how you can invest your talent, your time, your gifting your creativity, your ideas. It's time, y'all, for us to jump, leap. This week, this week needs to be a week where you finally do what you said you were going to do. Paul said, don't make the commitment. Don't start the process and then not follow through. God is saying right now, it's time for some of y'all to get started and it's time for others of us to follow through. <laughs> and I pray that you receive this message with an open heart and open mind because again, the encouragement is don't you eat that seed corn because if you plant it, God will take you to another level. Let me pray this prayer coming over you. Father in heaven, I pray for every ministry partner who is right now making the decision to help build your kingdom by not sitting idly on the sideline, but by saying I want to engage in, in real ministry. I want to use my gifting. I want to use my talent. I want to not just use uh, my abilities, but I want to take the possessions. I want to take the, the, the treasure, the money you've given me, the resources. And I want to start giving generously so that, <laughs> like your word declares, those who are blessed by the blessing will learn to be grateful and thank the blessor, which is you. May others know that you are good because of our willingness to be used. And we say, thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you for allowing a spring, uh, a well of, of enthusiasm and, and extravagance in our giving. May, may it spew from the city of our soul. And I know, God, that you're going to receive the glory. Ah, we say thank you in advance for doing it. And 
We pray it in the name of Jesus. Ah, uh, yeah. Let those who are going to invest, let those who understand now the laws of sowing and reaping, seed time and harvest. I dare you to put an amen right there in the comment section. We say thank God for his word. I encourage all of you again, my first church family, join us in the Zoom platform so that we can talk a little bit about the leadership that will be taking the baton in this next season of ministry at our church. We want to have a good conversation there. And I pray that you were inspired and encouraged. Don't you dare take that seed corn and eat it. <laughs> it's time to invest. I pray God's blessings over you. Make sure you call at least one or two people today. Go ahead and call them. We're not having drive-in service. This is virtual, but I want to still make sure you're connecting with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Reach out to them. Let them know that you love them, that you appreciate them. And even as you spend quality time with your creator today, as you walk with Jesus <laughs> and talk with him today, I pray that you would be prepared for this next, this next week is the week. This next week is the week <laughs> where we are going to sow and invest that which God has given us. I pray blessings over you. And we again will see you real soon. God bless you. Have a great rest of your Sabbath. I come with a simple message. There is but one way, one way to deal with all the stress and the anxiety and the sorrow and the death that we see around us. There is but one way. His name is Jesus. Jesus Christ is the way.